What's going on, everybody? Good morning. Hope all you're having a good day. Weather's starting to get actually nice here in San Diego for once. A lot of rant to go on this morning. I've been seeing the words functional training thrown around real loosely lately. Um, as you all know, I consider my studio to be a functional training studio. But I want to know from each of you what that word means. What does functional training mean to you, right? So the word function should mean like the functional training in itself, right? Should mean that there should be some direct carryover from the exercises that you do into your daily life, right? So if you lift heavy boxes overhead for a living, then maybe um, push presses are considered to be a functional exercise for you. If you, um, I don't know, if you play soccer, obviously, if you play football, then your exercise routine should mimic some of the movements that you do while you're on the field. So plenty of places saying they're doing functional training now. CrossFit was like, oh, it's a functional style training and that kind of thing to be able to do things and be strong in life and whatever, blah, 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 right? So now I've been seeing lately, especially with the older community, plenty of coaches having folks doing exercise and they call it them functional training, right? Um, but I have a difficult time understanding how the exercises that they're choosing directly translate into what people do on a regular basis, right? Or how it benefits them in their daily life or how it increases their capacity to do things that they need to do, want to do, enjoy doing. I got a prime example. I was on Instagram last night and I ain't gonna say where I saw it, but I saw a gentleman that previously had some issues in his back, um, L4, L5, disc issues, L4, L5 vertebrae, right? Had some issues with the disc in between there. <clears throat> and he was proceeding to do a, a fairly heavy deadlift, right? A deadlift over his weight, a traditional style deadlift over his weight. If I had to guess the gentleman was over the age of 50, maybe even 60, um, how does that translate directly into anything that he does in his day-to-day -day life? We know the value of resistance training, especially in older clientele. But how does that translate directly into anything that he wants to do? Now, I don't know the gentleman, so maybe, maybe he wants to deadlift. Maybe he enjoys deadlifting, whatever the case might be. But... Um, Again, what I want to know is what is your definition of function? How does your exercise regimen, how does your workout plan, how does your exercise selection translate? If you consider yourself to be doing functional training. Let us take a step back for a second there. If you say saying that I'm doing functional training, or I, my gym is a functional training gym, or my coach is a functional trainer, or however you want to put it, right? If you put yourself in that realm, in that box, then I would like to know how the exercises that you're doing or how the gym or studio that you go into, how their exercise selection translates directly to benefit the things that you enjoy doing, want to do, whatever the case is, right? Um, I give an example. Barbell back squats, right? So barbell across the back, high bar, low bar, depending on your positioning, right? How does that track? How does that? How is that considered a functional exercise? Why is that considered a functional exercise? How often do you put something across your back in your daily life and lift it off the ground, or lift it off of a rack, take two steps back, squat a depth, which that's a whole nother ball game right there. We're gonna talk about squat depth and how people assess, determine, figure out how deep people should squat. As our next video all by itself right but um how how does that translate into any functional movement in your day-to-day -day life that's just an example right
So people say, well, you have to sit down and get up all day. Sure, absolutely. Right, you sit in a chair, you sit on the toilet, you sit wherever the hell else you just sit down on the couch. So why then is it necessary to load your spine from the top down um, in order to make you better at sitting down on the couch, sitting down on the table, sitting in your car, sitting on the toilet? Function. Function, right? That's what I call it. Functional training. So, I'm very selective about how I say things and when I say things and what I say. Maybe not everybody is so. Maybe I just a picky asshole or something like that, right? But um, figure out what the word function means to you. Determine what you need. What is the purpose of your training, right? Because it shouldn't just be exercising, right? It should be training. It should have some kind of purpose. Because if it has a purpose, it's going to be important to you. And it's going to be more sustainable. And you're going to have a goal to achieve. Now, it's not just about achieving the goal, right? It's falling in love with the process. That's the best way to be successful. Because especially, this is not an overnight thing, right? This is something that takes years. And it takes a long time to be able to improve, right? You don't just start working out. And then three, four, five months later, you're like, ah, ah, I reach. So I'm done, right? It's, it's, a, it's a journey. The hope is that you continue to exercise and that the exercises and selection and process and everything that you're doing is progressive and you could continue to get better and better and better, right? I don't think anybody ever sets a goal and is like, oh, all right, I reach, bam, and then they finish doing everything, right? And they stop. They stop working out just because they, the scale says a number. They stop lifting because they hit a weight that was established by God knows who. And they say, oh, I reach my PR or whatever the case is, personal record. And then they decide... That, all right, I done. I stop working out, stop training, right? It's about falling in love with the process. So, again, I said in the last video too, be picky, be selective, be smart, right? Stop doing exercises that don't make any damn sense that the risk doesn't outweigh the gain and pick things that are actually practical and applicable to your life and to the things that you want to do, right? I'll go. Train a client. Later.